Kenny and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our match preview and today me, Phil and Steve were joined by Dave Kyo says hello, just like the flag says. Hello. And Jimmy the bell ringer, give us a bell. <laughs> we're here to talk about uh, the Moldova game. We're going through the match preview and we're going to talk about Martin O'Neill's decision with his final squad. And we're going to go through uh, Staten 11. So, Steve, I suppose I'll start with you, being yeah. a salmon of knowledge and everything Steve, like that. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so what do you think of the inclusion of, I suppose we go for the ones that kind of everyone's kind of happy to see, is the new blood coming in, Scott yeah, Hogan, like, Ada Bryan, and Sean McGuire. It's nice to see that we finally have a couple of strikers in the squad who are under 30 years old, and that don't play in Scotland, because for... I, I genuinely can't remember the last time we really had a player regularly in the squad who wasn't just the established names we've had for years and years now. The Doyles, the Longs, Keynes, Daryl Murphy, David McGoldrick, Adam Rooney even. Players who are just always around the squad. But McGoldrick's in the squad as well. Though. Yeah, but to have different players coming into the squad. Aidan O'Brien has had a great year and a half for Millwall. He was influential for them in League One last year. He's got a couple of goals so far this year. They're finding it a little bit tough in the Championship at times, but they're doing all right, and he's starting for them every week. Scott Hogan was prolific at Brentford when he was fit, and he's just unfortunate in the fact that he probably made the wrong move for himself and going to Villa, because they don't really play his style of football. Yeah. Um, and the inclusion of Sean Maguire is well, well overdue, because he's probably the only Irish striker who's even around the mention for the squad who's been scoring goals for the last 18 months. Yeah. So I think they're all positives, but whether any of them see game time is a completely different story. Dave, how do you feel? Yeah, I think he has very good points there. Um, they definitely need fresh blood up front. I think uh, it'd be worth with this game against Moldova. I think like we should win this game at least three 0 and throw one of the lads in, either Hogan or McGuire. From the start. From the start, fresh blood up front with Long play four four two. I'd go four four two, and I'd go for it. a bit of width. The Gady maybe out and wait. Yeah, uh, I know. The other fella's suspended, um, James is suspended. But uh, I'd definitely throw in either McGuire or Hogan and see what they made. We should should win this game, handy enough. Yeah. So I think you, this you'd like be, to think so anyway. This could be the right time to breed the lads in. Yeah, okay, Phil? Yeah, um, obviously it's nice to see the new face around the squad. Uh, Hogan, as you said, as Steve was saying, he's kind of had a tough, tough spell at Villa. Um, it's just kind of a case with Martin O'Neill is you see new face around the squad like are they going to come in uh, there is obviously big shouts for Sean McGuire as you said I would like to see him kind of get 15-20 minutes coming off the bench uh, personally <coughs> I like we were speaking before obviously the video on that um, I would have probably forgotten with Martin O'Neill tactics to throw Murphy up front yeah um, yeah and uh, kind of just do start, like set out as a four one four one have Moyler kind of be the anchor, yeah. And Hendrick and Hillan behind Murphy, uh, if that's what we're gonna revert to. Um, I do see us pressuring Moldova, and I do see us making it very difficult for them. It's just when kind of the slump happens, uh, will O'Neill kind of bring on the right players to yeah. to kind of to kind of keep the energy because they will come out of the blocks in the first yeah. half. But well, Jimmy, how do you feel? Like, is I think it's nice to see him actually. Picking in form strikers in the squad. I know Long's not in form, but pretty much everyone else that's in the squad is actually in form and scoring goals. Oh, definitely. Like you look at Hendrix, you know, like scoring for Burnley the weekend, like you know. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, like you know, I actually I was just saying there earlier on about I'd like to see Elliot in there in goals. Rob Elliot. Yeah, you know, definitely. I think um, he's playing in Premiership, like you know. I think Maybe Randolph. Sure uh, Randolph needs to be left. Left on the sideline, I think. I think we need a fresh blood in goals. Well, I don't like, think you know. that, I don't, I don't it's just himself and with Clark playing in, in, in the defence centre half. Like, you know, you have two people that link with one another yeah, every that, week. That's like, a fairly you know. good point now, in fairness. Then, now, yeah. That is actually a very good point. My argument to the whole keeping situation is like, we're the keeper that's playing well. And he's used to playing for Ireland now. I wouldn't be kind of messing with that. Kind of area really? of the pitch till maybe the next set of. I don't uh, think so. Well, I think it's an ideal game. Like again, them all though. Like it's an ideal game to bring in somebody like him. It'll 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 
shoot up Randolph for the like if he's back in for the Wales game, like don't know, it'll make a difference. I think yeah, you I need just don't think Randolph's that's down though. No, he hasn't. Like, the one no, thing yeah. against the Uruguay, yeah. otherwise he's like, like, Steve, like, yeah. you're dying to say something. Yeah, I think he's. A, I think Randolph's a little. I've always felt he's a little bit suspect um, at his near post, and he gets beat at his near post. His bread and butter, his bread and butter. Is far too yeah. often he gets beat at his near post. Yes, he's athletic. Yes, he makes good saves, but so does Rob Elliott. And Elliot is just, he seems to me, he's a stronger goalkeeper. He seems stronger mentally. And we look at it, and obviously Randolph isn't anywhere near as established as Joe Hart is with England. But England are having the same issue at the minute, where Gareth Southgate continues to start Joe Hart in qualifiers, mm. even though Jack Butland's a better goalkeeper than him. Pickford's oh, yeah. a better goalkeeper. Yeah. Heaton's a better goalkeeper. And it's like, just because they're goalkeepers, just because they don't make loads of mistakes, doesn't mean they're the best man to be the number one in between the sticks. Yeah. Like you have to go with the player who's playing at the highest level and is playing regularly and is playing well for his club. Oh yeah, definitely. Rob yeah. Elliott has had a great season so far for Newcastle. <laughs> he's keeping a good goalkeeper and Carl, Dar- Carl Darlow out of the team. He's keeping other good goalkeepers. They've sent Sells out on loan. They've let Krul go to Brighton. He's the number one. They, those are four decent goalkeepers and he's... And Rafa Benitez is a man who's won Champions Leagues and La oh, Ligas yeah. and everything yeah. like that. And he thinks he's the best of those four goalkeepers. No disrespect to Darren Randolph, but Joe Hart had a torrid season at Torino and Randolph was shipped out from West Ham so Joe Hart could come in. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Very good point. <laughs> yeah. I do agree with you yeah. there. The only thing is just with goalkeepers and confidence. And I just think with Randolph, because he hasn't let us down, give him the next two games and then maybe look at giving uh, Elliot a game. He hasn't really played that much for Ireland. And don't get me wrong, he is a good keeper for, for Newcastle. His injury is probably the only thing that has held him back, yeah. you know? I do believe if he can stay injury free, he will be the uh, the long term number one. And yeah, I do, I yeah. would like to see a Premier League keeper be our keeper. Yeah. But at the moment, I don't like. I think you're agreeing with me here because you're shaking hands. I think Randolph. <laughs> I think I think, I think, the, I think the one he thing hasn't let us down I don't except that Uruguay the punch that yeah, was it. Yeah. I think the one thing you don't do is you don't mess around with the back four. I think these lads have been playing together. You know, they've a cohesion. They know they know what he, what they're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, me and Steve spoke about the fact that he's not really picked anybody, fullback level, to uh, yeah. to come in. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have to cover a fullback. But I think, like, if you yeah, if you're gonna change something fullback, fair enough. But I think just the goalkeeper and the two two centre backs. Yeah. I just don't think you should tamper with them. Absolutely. I think like if Rob's going to come five, in, pretty much. Like Rob's had a great start to the season. I think you need to blow them in the friendlies. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, he, he is he is a good keeper like I, I don't I think if he does come in if he, like let's just say he did I, th- I think he would do very well yeah I just I just think like tampering w- with that uh, situation at the moment just because it's such a delicate situation in terms of the um, we need to win these games yeah, and exactly, I just think yeah. I like people can say whatever they want about, about Randolph and, and that whatever but at the same time he hasn't let us down so what's the point in taking him out if he hasn't let us down yeah. in my opinion like yeah, yeah. Um, you want to talk about the fact that uh, Ender Stevens wasn't picked in the squad there after another assist? It's not even. It's not even just Ender Stevens. I think it's overall. Like, it's the lack of there being ev- any cover a fullback. If Stephen Ward gets yeah. injured in the next couple of days in training, or if Cyrus Christie gets injured in the next couple of days in training, we we don't have another fullback in the squad. You're putting David Myler at right back. You're putting. I don't know, with Brady suspended, probably Callum O'Dowd at left back. Mm. You're putting lads out of position when you've got an informed player in Stevens playing in the championship every week, creating assists, playing well. He's a confident lad. He won League 2 at Portsmouth last year. He's flying with Sheffield United in the championship this year. And you've also How got, many assists ma- you got? Seven. Yeah, seven yeah. In all competitions, which is. Maybe no, Maybe too. Every, yeah, every yeah. time he gets an assist, he sends us uh, <laughs> Put it sends in the group a picture chat. of his <laughs> <laughs> The other one as well is Matt Doherty, who's floated around the squad now for a couple of years, but he's just admitted every time we get to the final squad. I don't honestly see what Cyrus Christie has done, especially in a defensive sense, to warrant being such a secure number one right back. Yeah, I agree. There's probably not that much of a difference between him and Darty, but we haven't seen Darty given the chance. And Darty's the more defensively solid player, which is where Christie lacks, and it's where Christie costs us against Serbia, as we talked about in that video. And the fact that he's just he has no pressure on him at right back for his position because Coleman's yeah, out. Coleman's doing it's that. it's very hard for him to go. Oh well, I made a mistake against Serbia, but I don't really need to get better because there's no one there to take my place anyway at the minute. So he can just come in and be the same. He doesn't have to push on and get better. 
Whereas if there was Doherty there pushing behind them to maybe get that spot, then he has an added motivation and he has an added emphasis to do well, work on his defending in that unit, which is where he really lets us down uh, uh, along with well, calling you, in on his left foot every would time. Would you not say that maybe he's, he, he's gone all out here with the strikers and, I, and he's not really... I asked with the defenders in this, in this particular set of games... He looks like he's got all going plays and he wants to attack. He wants to, he want, he, he knows he needs to win the game. But it's nearly the same back four, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know, so it's, there's, no, there's no point in tampering with the back four. Yeah, yeah but the, yeah. the only argument he's saying is that if, if someone gets injured, then there's no one to come in. We know more like can fill in a right back. Yeah. Right. Um, and Calmo there they can go left back but they're not ideal they're not set for that position is basically yeah, what he's saying against like, I know you got Kevin Long right. there for centre half who's an you know, ideal yeah, place and can come in and can yeah. do a yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good job yeah, do a good job yeah. like, I know Shea well he's reliable but he's yeah. old right? realistically we're looking at if Ward was to go down injured the most logical one because our doubt is so unproven at international level is we're probably going to have a 36 year old half croc John O'Shea playing left back against Moldova or Wales and that can't happen because I don't care if they're Moldova or they're Germany they'll exploit it and it's just it's nonsensical to not have a couple of extra players in that squad just to throw a spanner into the walks there with all the full backs you mentioned there the yeah. Matt Doherty and then the Stevens. why not give one of our own home players a run of the squad Sean Gannon who's yeah. playing excellent stuff for Dundalk he's been playing in Europe this year with Dundalk in the European Cup Champions League so keep the home the homelands involved and it's great to see the likes of Maguire and Hogan in, in the squad, Daryl Hogan. And I'd love to see them getting a run yeah. Wednesday night. No, or Friday night swing. I don't dis- I don't disagree with you whatsoever and I think absolutely Sean Gannon and Dan Massey as well have been yeah. outstanding for Dundalk for the last couple of years. My problem with it is I've actually gotten to the point where I don't even bother bringing up the League of Ireland players with Ireland anymore because yeah. Martin O'Neill just won't pick them. Yeah. No matter how much I got out the bat for one, I was on about Sean McGuire for the goods of a year. And as soon as he got on a flight over to England, so I went for press and he was in the squad. Yeah. So I just feel like no matter how much... They wouldn't, Sean, you, they, would, they wouldn't let you ask that at the press conference. Yeah. <laughs> and Sean Gannon might McGuire be... Centre in us. Um, Sean Gannon might be the second or third best right back that we currently have. And he might be as good as Christy or Doherty. But we're never going to know unless yeah. he's in the setup. Yeah. Yeah. And See, realistically, he's not going to be. And also, you look at it, Stevens has obviously come up back up through the lower leagues in England, but he is a home produced player. He is a lad who was at UCD, he was at Pats, he was at Rovers. So he is a lad who's come through the system and then he went to England and it didn't work out at Villa. He went to Portsmouth, had two great years with them, and he's having a great year at Sheffield United. So I wouldn't disagree with having Gannon or Massey in it on ability, but I just don't think he picked them. And that's the only reason See, I wouldn't go to bat for them. You know the way O'Neill is, like fam- familiarity breeds content. Like he, he goes at what he knows, players he knows, players he knows are going to fit his system. Um, like Obviously, we see the new faces now, again, as I said earlier. Like Are we going to see them at all? Uh, to be honest, I, th- I think if we are going to see them, I think it's going to be if we really are like 2 0 up or something. Yeah. And he brings yeah, them all back yeah. after 60 minutes. Yeah. And ideally, I'll, I'll, I know he's my disagree with me on this but I would like to see someone like McGuire coming off the bench after 60 minutes and getting a run and maybe getting a goal and then maybe look at maybe then giving him a run against Wales see how he handles the pressure of playing for the national team against Moldova I know they're two completely different uh, strengths we're talking yeah. about here it, but it is when the, you talk about O'Neill though they, they're, they really are just hypothetical situations like you just can't I know, see I'm sure that even that team there is hypothetical but yeah, we'll get to that in yeah. a couple of minutes but um, again do you like obviously you were here with League of Ireland fan like how like do you think Martin O'Neill really is interested in players coming up from the League of Ireland? But a lot of the a lot of the managers down the years have never picked the Trapper. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's nothing changed in that department. But the players actually now are so good. Yeah, yeah, they're better than they were years ago. Like yeah. under Trap and the rest of the managers. But I think now that the League of Ireland is fairly strong. And you've seen how far Dundalk went in Europe last year. It shows you that there's quality there in the yeah. League of Ireland. That it shouldn't be uh, just pushed aside. And yeah. I would be pushing like, to try to get one of these lads yeah. into the team, yeah. you know? No, I think like Brian Kerr is probably the last person who's picked someone from the League of Ireland. Steve Staunton, I think. Oh, picked, Steve Staunton picked Joe Gamble and stuff when they were going on that US tour. 
I remember, since, I remember since he was then, Gary Ro- as well. Yeah. Gary Rogers um, on their... Gary Rogers was the Some first one. Yeah. Gary Rogers was the first one to come in under O'Neill, and then obviously Boyle and Horgan yeah. came in, but didn't play when they were at Dundalk. But as soon as they went to Preston, they got games. So just you know that, magi- that magical a, flight to England. Horgan might be in a uh, dark horse, maybe to, to to come off the bench and make a difference. <coughs> with, with McLean out, out yeah, suspended. No, he's just well, he's same type he's of player. Yeah. Yeah. Know, he he looks like McLean as well. He does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's the same type of player, like yeah. you know, his aggression and all yeah. that, like you know. He's like, like, Shane Long apparently sat out training today, uh, but apparently it's just a precaution. Um, for me, knowing O'Neill, he's going to start. Yeah, it's going to be long. Yeah. So I think the only thing I hate seeing with us is this stupid diagonal long ball up to Shane Long, when realistically we all know that it should have been John Walters in the Serbia game being the long ball put up to and Shane Long being yeah. on a wide right running off him oh yeah definitely, so yeah. I'm hoping I suppose we go through the team that kind of we kind of picked earlier myself myself Phil and Steve with you know the back five with the keeper included that kind of picks itself yeah Um. then we we threw Moyla in like as a kind of anchor man yeah, but Moyla was kind of like a match the last one yeah, oh, like, yeah brilliant yeah, it's like a diamond diamond sort of formation yeah. with uh, Moyla as the anchor then we got Hurrahan Hendrick and I put McGeady in but <laughs> I think I should have been putting uh, Wezzo in well I picked I picked McGeady and didn't pick Wes but this is a long standing stand off I've had with everyone who rates Wes Hillland so <laughs> yeah but uh, see McGeady in, in that position which strikes me that game against uh, Georgia when he did that little flick Came on, scored that goal. Yeah. He's playing that position then for us. I think some of McGee's, Bit of creativity. I think some of McGeady's best performances and the best moments for Ireland have come when he's been able to, whether he's been playing on the left or right and kind of been given license to float in, or he's actually played a bit more central. I think he's so much more effective because at his age as well, he probably doesn't have the pace to beat lads outside. We probably don't want him to beat lads outside because he's never been able to put well, If you've seen his goal for Sunderland the other night, it was pretty much in a number 10 position against uh, Preston. Yeah, but he's got such quick feet. Something. Quick feet. A team get a team like Moldova, Aiden McGeady will kill them with quick feet. Yeah. It's that little bit of quality, that little bit of trickery is what stands out. Moldova can be physical and Moldova can, you know, they can have players with pace and power and everything like that. It's the actual skill levels that'll do it. And even having McGeady and Hillahan in the team against Moldova is probably a better option because I know we might lose a little bit of pace, but we probably don't have that much anyway. So I wouldn't be against actually having both of them in there with maybe just Murphy up front. I know I'm asking for yeah. a lot for Shane Long not to start, but if it was just Murphy up front and you had McGeady and Hillahan playing well, off him, not, I think it's a little bit more progressive. But like, we're talking about players playing at the highest teams and Long has actually had the start in the last three games now for Southampton from the start. I agree. Like, he, 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 like, okay, people sometimes don't like where he's... I really like Shane Long. Don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about informed strikers. But now he's pla- he's he's getting his place now at Southampton, and we're saying we want players playing the Premiership. Or playing in the Premiership. Oh, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. My, my my point being is that he's just not scoring goals, and he hasn't looked like he's going to score a goal for Ireland in a while. But I still put him in that team because I don't see him getting dropped either way. But at the not same actually. time, we have players, and we've all said it. That are there scoring yeah. goals, but we just don't think that they're gonna. He trusts in Long, and he seems to trust in in Murphy, whereas he's obviously not gonna trust O'Brien, and um, Mur, or, not sorry, Murphy, McGuire and uh, Hogan. Yeah. As much as we would like him to see, but who knows? Because he's been training with them all week, so you never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what you're gonna get with Shane Long. He'll run all day. So there's run. another lad now can't get a look in, and he, his bit quality, I think, is Colin Adele. Yeah, and who are him? And, he can't get a game yeah. with Bristol City. Like he's on your sub every week, but he's never let Ireland down. I doubt it. Yeah, but uh, uh, you look at Hurahan, who's another player in form, banging them in yeah. for Villa. Yeah. And with uh, <coughs> Brady being out, you know, I don't see anyone really else there. Except pieces, pieces, yeah. pieces yeah. there, oh, yeah. gonna, and he's the same type of left footed. Right. Do you know what I mean? He's obviously not a winger, and with that formation, he's. It's like a, a right side of centre midfield and, and, and uh, <coughs> he's, he's left with Hendrick. 
It's a diamond, you know, like kind of an Ace of Milan, two thousand and three. So yeah, we're getting, we're getting creative. Yeah. 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 And maybe Kaka was at the table. But anyway, the, the lads here, did, uh, Jimmy and uh, David didn't pick the team here. It was me, Steve, yeah. and uh, it was a combined kind of yeah. effort. So I don't blame them. Okay, he, Paul went mad with the formation. Uh, well, I would say, though, Moiler, I think, will be big. Uh, as he, he was. so calm. Oh, exactly, yeah, but he was there. Amazing, amazing. Because there's going to be long stretches of the game where we will be kind of, Moldova will play. Like, it doesn't matter kind of what team it is. Every team seems to be able to keep the ball against us. I think Moyle would be big for that if they're if they're launching an attack and he's just calm and he'll break up the play. I think he'll get to people Glenn Wheel and can't get to anymore, you know. And so, David Moyle's passing ability, especially his long passing, yeah. is important in the game. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> when Moldova do push up, when Moldova do try and have an attack, they are a weaker side, they're weaker in their systems defensively and they'll leave gaps and a player who can play accurate long balls and ones that we can actually, if long, start and get the ball in behind in an intelligent way and not just lump it up in between the two centre-halves, you can try and get it in behind full-backs. Then all of a sudden, Shane Long becomes a factor in the game. But you have to get those balls from him. I think Myler with a little bit of space, a little bit of time, deep in that midfield, can find those passes. The same with Horan. Both good long passes of the ball, and I think that can be important, especially against Moldova, in just switching the play quickly and catching them when they do come in attack. Yeah, well, especially because yeah. we don't have win- we're not probably not going to have wingers. That's, that's another reason why I went for that formation. It's a bit narrow, but we don't have Brady and we don't have McLean, so I think then yeah. when they keep it keep it tight, yeah. get our take take our chances when we get to them and catch them on the break. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think if you go with long, like obviously we're seeing it, you know you're going to get effort from him. He chase the channels, but. I think he needs someone up there with him. I think he needs to be the man running off. Yeah. So he needs to be running yeah. off a big man like like Murray. That's what he wants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why we went for it. Uh, I think. But otherwise, it would be Johnny Walters. That's it. But he, he seems to have the top level. He seems to have a fascination with playing Walters on the wing. I I never got that. He did it for Stoke. Yeah, yeah. He he did. Did. Just, yeah. No, he did. No, you say mm-hmm. Walters all right. Like he was always number one with Stoke. Like when yeah. he was there. Yeah. Like you know. I don't know, you was at him on the team straight away, like you know. Yeah. For the work he done out in the out in the right, like you know. Yeah. So um I think O'Neill was trying to see was that going to to work for ourselves, like you know. Well it we, didn't, it didn't. I mean look at Bosnia again, it didn't work out too bad, did it? No, it didn't, no. Yeah, it's true. Um but um no, he's a f- it's somebody that you like to see on the sheet actually is Walters, but I don't know how he, he is or what yeah, he does, so yeah, hundred percent like you know. Yeah. Well yeah. um do you think that uh, Friday night that O'Neill might hold back players from Monday night? No. No? I think he'll go with his try to trust him. He'll go with his... And I, 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 is the only one probably there that's not tried and trusted by him. But like, he definitely won't play like, like, like Wesho and two games. I don't think he's got... I think, I think he might rest James McCarthy for the Wales game. I think he might do that. I think he might keep Wesho for the Wales game. Well, maybe. Well, there's, there's also Harry Arthur there. You know, yeah, you, 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 you could see, you could see us setting. I think, up. I think he's carrying <coughs> enough. That's the only reason yeah. he's not on that. You team. could see us setting up very negative against Moldova, probably with the Wales game in the morning. We need the three point going into the Wales game. Uh, we need to go in there on a high. So I think he needs to get the result, and you know, we can we can't be going in there like if we draw, that's it. Yeah, good night. Game over. Yeah, I I do kind of, I do kind of think we need to come out and as much as anything, obviously we need a win. Um, but we have to come out and we have to go fully for it and we need to put Moldova away. Confidence needs to come back into this team. Because the confidence is completely out of it at the minute after Serbia, I think. I think a lot of the lads are... Not that the heads are down or anything like that, but they realise that it is tough and you do, I'd say as a player, focus on the fact that Monday is so important against Wales because that decides second place. But if Georgia pull off a result against Wales on Friday and we beat Moldova, suddenly it's a little bit easier, suddenly it feels a little bit less daunting to go to Cardiff yeah. um, and get a result. But you know, to see that we... Small video, we haven't spoken about yeah, it. Yeah, we, yeah, we but we'll come back on to that yeah. <laughs> when we get to the Wales game anyway. Sorry, go on. Yeah, but I just think we need to come out and I guess make a statement that we're not dead in this group, yeah. that we can still put teams away and get a few goals, get a little bit of just positive play flowing through the team as much as anything and O'Neill needs to be in a position where 
even though we know Brady and McLean are going to come back in, that a couple of the players who are going to come in and replace them show them that there is a spot in that team against Wales for such an important, such a big game that there is places to be had in that team and that he's not just going to revert to type with the players he picks. Okay, have you got anything more to add to that, lads? Oh, no, it's very confident, Friday night. 3 goals, 3-0. Yeah, we're going 3-0. Yeah, yeah. 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 I got 2-1, Ireland, obviously. 3-0 to me, yeah, 3-0. Right, yeah. I'm bullish and go 5-1 <laughs> I'm going to go 2-0 don't then then forget we need a result with Belgium and yeah on Saturday night True. we need Belgium to yeah, win we need well. Belgium to win on Saturday That's night that's right Lukaku he's scoring Lukaku will sort it out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway I'm never um, a fan asking Lukaku to sort something out in a big game <laughs> 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 I mean, we complained about, about him for the last year we, we, we live in hope don't we anyway I think we leave it there Um you guys have anything to say do leave them in the comments don't forget to like subscribe and share thanks very much for coming on daily jimmy thank you very much thanks Thanks very much thanks very much for watching irish football fan tv come on you boys in green